Adjusted earthquakes reveals magma is to Yellowstone's surface. When standing in many places in Yellowstone National Park, the signs of a buried heat source are undeniable, leading us to wonder, how far beneath my feet is the magma? The answer is crucial to fundamental scientific questions about magma reservoirs and understanding Yellowstone's potential hazards. And, it's a very interesting question too. There is a long history of physical and chemical measurements providing evidence of magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera, with estimates of the depth to the top of the reservoir ranging from 3 to 9 kilometers, about 2 to 5.5 miles, below the surface. Most previous seismic imaging has estimated a subtle and formative 3D structure regarding the approximate size, shape, and location of the magma reservoir. A limitation is that the resulting reservoir edges are blurred. Sharpening the view is important because better understanding the depth and characteristics of the top of the magma reservoir will provide additional insights into magma storage and magmatic gas release to gain a sharper view of the top of the magma reservoir. To determine its depth and characterized by gradual or abrupt transitions, a team of seismologists used a controlled seismic source and hundreds of seismometers to image the subsurface. The controlled source is a 53,000-pound truck with a vibrating hydraulic plate that creates seismic signals, like small, purpose-built earthquakes. During the summer of 2020, the truck generated these special earthquakes at numerous paved roadside exits throughout the caldera. The work was done in the middle of the night to avoid impacting park visitors, either from small ground vibrations or traffic delays. The seismic signals generated by the truck were measured at several dozen permanent Yellowstone seismic network stations. Also, approximately 600 temporarily installed seismometers were deployed along roads and trails specifically for this seismic experiment. The seismic waves generated by the truck were tuned to bounce off the magma chamber, with the data from those reflections expected to provide new insights into exactly where the top of the magma chamber is located and what it looks like. In locating the top of the magma reservoir, that its boundary is less than about 100 meters thick, the seismologists estimated the concentration and type of fluid present at the very top of the reservoir. They found that a two-part mixture of just magma and solid mineral crystals would not match the strength of the reflected seismic signal, but a three-part mixture with supercritical fluid bubbles, magma, and solid mineral crystals could explain the reflections much better. These results are consistent with geochemical models that suggest bubbles would emerge from magma stored at an intermediate depth of 3.8 kilometers, 2.4 miles. At greater depths and under greater pressure, the elements that make up the bubbles would remain dissolved in the magma. However, at the depths measured by the new seismic data, bubbles would emerge from the magma and rise to form a cap over the magma reservoir. This may sound alarming. The accumulation of bubbles in a magma reservoir can be a crucial step in creating conditions favorable for eruption, but it depends on the concentration of both the magma and the bubbles. Fortunately, the Yellowstone magma system appears to be in a stable configuration. Seismic reflections indicate about 14% fluid and about 86% solid crystals in the reservoir cap. Under these conditions, Bubbles are expected to rise efficiently to the surface, preventing excessive pressure buildup. <laughs>